Hello, hello, dears, and welcome back to the channel Benidorm by Anna. Welcome back to the latest Benidorm news update. We are in a gorgeous natural park between Benidorm and Albiran. We're here to let you know all the latest news. As usual, we will start with the tourism situation right now, almost mid-September. And then we have two more news plus the weather forecast prepared for you. So let's dive into it. The first situation update in terms of tourism, as you all know, it is not as busy, as crowded as it might be in July and August, but not much less than that, I must say. There are still many tourists arriving. There is international tourists, mostly coming from UK, uh, northern countries from Norway, from Netherlands, uh, French, uh, from Belgium as well. A lot of people are coming here. Eastern countries, Iceland, Ireland, obviously from UK, from Australia, even from all different parts of the world. International tourists, those who do not have children or are retired already, uh, decide to enjoy our region of Costa Blanca and Spain in general because it's not as hot, there is no heat waves, but the sea is warm enough to dive into it and enjoy the holidays by the beach. So there are quite a lot of different types of events going on and we'll be talking about it today too. Uh, today, 13th of September, there is a cocktails contest in Benidorm that started just today and it will finish on 22nd of September. This contest is meant to try out and choose at the end the best cocktail the most popular one uh, in terms of official professional judges and the most popular for all the people who've tried it and voted what you have to do is to go on the website of visit benidorm or the official uh, tourism office in benidorm town they will give you the list of all the places that are participating and the cocktails that are participating and you will be able to vote in each one of these places uh, and try these special cocktails out so we're really intrigued on which cocktail will win this year's best cocktail in benidorm award we have one week slightly more even to enjoy these if you're a cocktail fan that's the contest for you to see Obviously, there are theaters, micro theaters, interpretations, there are expositions, uh, there is music, there's different festivities and celebrations that will accompany us through the months of September and October. Right before in November, we start annual Benidorm November Fiestas, which is going to be epic. Uh, it's a big celebration for a week, slightly more than that. Uh, when we have a few bank holidays, when there's fairs, there's attractions for children, there's music and markets everywhere. It's just a celebration of the city, one of the most important ones in our region. So make sure you don't miss it. Make sure to check all the official websites, the town hall one, visit Benidorm, the uh, tourism office website to actually see if there is something happening on the days you will be arriving. The second news that I wanted to share with you all is about a very strange celebration in Spain. One of the strangest in the world, in the entire world. As you know, Spain is quite particular with its traditions, with the uh, different types of celebrations, what these celebrations mean and what they represent. And this is by far the strangest one I've ever seen in Spain. This 15th of September on 12 midday in the Ermita de Sanz, which is, if I'm not wrong, is right next to the flea market, El Cisne, right behind it on the back side. There is going to be a celebration where people will be able to win a thousand euros if they get it right. This celebration is this one right here, as you can see on the screen. Basically, there is a mule in a closed recinct and it's being drawn by small squares. Uh, these squares are numbered. So basically you purchase a ticket, which is like a 10 euros per participation per one small square. 
and uh, the idea is that the person who chooses the square if the mule will deposit its uh, its things if the mule will go to the toilet in this square you will win money very strange tradition i don't know where it came from uh, maybe it meant prosperity maybe it meant good luck not too sure but this tradition has been here up until recently before pandemics then it stopped and now from 2021 2022 it started back again don't worry we will go there and we will film you at least a short video format for you to see what it actually looks like because it's quite a strange event i've never ever seen nothing like this before let us know if you did maybe it's just us but i think it's one of the strangest traditions in the world curious festivity that will bring you money uh, if you will be right about the square apart from that it's not the only one we have two curious and strange celebrations here in Valencian community that will be celebrated shortly one of them at least one is la tomatina which is this right here it is a tradition when uh, long long time ago centuries ages ago when one person got so furious at the event that was happening uh, he went to the nearby stand of fruit and vegetables and he got really very very well done like tomatoes red ones very like smooshy ones already he got these and he started to throw it at the people he was angry with and like this the tradition was born it's to live a life stress-free to get uh, to get all these emotions away to de-stress yourself basically and this tradition is continuing in Valencian community still and it is La Tomatina. I'm sure north uh, parts of Spain, they also have something similar, but mostly it is here in our region. And apart from that, there is also Enarinados, which is basically covered in flour. Okay, uh, not in flowers, but in flour as of baking flour, you know, uh, for baking. And uh, this is a tradition that is typical also in our area and it's celebrated in December, 28th of December. Uh, check the information out if you are curious or maybe you want to join this type of festivity. It's free of charge. Obviously, everyone can join and it's like a local celebration. Uh, and this is where people are throwing flour at each other. And uh, it's also a good way of starting a new year fresh uh, to distress yourself and get some positivity back to your life so let us know which curious celebrations or maybe traditions does your country have who has the most strange one we'll read you here in the comments the last news that i wanted to share with you all is about a benidorm and torre vieja two cities that are the first ones who lead requests, as you can see here on the screen, inspections and fines to prevent illegal uh, touristic apartments in these cities, in Benidorm and Torrevieja. These are the first ones in province and I'm quite sure not going to be the last ones. Um, Alicante is finishing up the last touches to do it as well. And Villajoyosa, and Alfaz del Pi plus Albir are thinking about it. Altea, at least for now, declared they are not planning to put on any kind of restrictions to touristic apartments. It's been a month since the brand new law pretending to control way more touristic apartments to limitate them and make sure there are no illegal apartments in specific municipal areas and giving the control to the town hall instead of like um, regional government uh, and uh, it's been taking place it's been voted so now it's all confirmed uh, right now only these two cities uh, have approved it and officially requested uh, what needs to be done to pass all the authority to them uh, so we will see what's going to be happening. We will keep you up to date because we know that there is a lot of people who are planning on investing in touristic apartments in this area, at least for some time before they officially retire and will come here to Spain to live. 
uh, or have it as a second uh, holiday home for them to arrive. Uh, but Alfas del Pi, at least now, they've stopped giving touristic licenses for some time. Benidorm will maybe only be giving them for two years and then you will need to renew them. Each area will have its own small additional rules to the general ones to make sure that there is no excessive touristic accommodation that is being uh, promoted inside of residential buildings where people live the whole entire year. That is the whole idea of it. That is the whole idea of this brand new law. Uh, and I do think it is a correct way to do because obviously while we'll while it's your property and you're able to do with it whatever you want, you need to think as well that whenever you're purchasing an, a property inside of a residential complex, if all the rest of people there are living there the whole entire year, it is unfair for them to deal, to have to deal with numerous tourists arriving nonstop, with the noise of people coming outside of usual hours, with maybe screaming music or people just not caring about which if they do make any noise or not while the rest of the community there have to wake up early for work have children maybe small children that go to school or to daycare uh, that do their usual lives and are not here for fun or for holidays thus um, this is one of the main reasons it's being done and also because the government believes that this will keep help better to say to control the uh, accommodation for long-term rentals and it will make property owners to go back to the long-term rent and by this providing more supply right now we have high demand and very low supply so it's to equilibrate the two of them more or less personally i don't think it's going to work people will just sell their property or just maintain it closed because it is not the issue touristic apartments are not the issue here the issue is that People do not believe in long-term rent any longer. The owners, they are unprotected against Ocupas, against a lot of other things, uh, and uh, they cannot do anything with it. Uh, so a lot of the times for them, it just doesn't make any sense to put it long-term because they're afraid people might stay in their apartment and they will be helpless and won't be able to do anything to, to um, recover their property. So this is one of the main issues, not the touristic accommodation, but it is also one of the key points that needs to be dealt with. So Benidorm and Torrevieja, first ones in province, first ones in our Valencian community. We'll see how it will end. And now let's have a short walk and we'll let you know what the weather will be like this upcoming week, mid-September in Spain, Costa Blanca and Benidorm town. Today it might be cloudy at some points of the day. You can see there are clouds right there on the horizon. There is quite a strong wind as you can see some waves as well. Uh, by tomorrow the clouds will go away. Tuesday it might be raining a tiny bit and Wednesday it probably will be. We are back to the normal climate here, aren't we? That's how the usual September should be. Today, quite chilly between 24 to 27, the rest of the week 28 to 29. With the rain, obviously, the temperatures will get down slightly more towards 24, 25 on Wednesday. But still great, and the sea temperature is of 26.5 in Benidorm. Still ideal for swimming. Thank you for accompanying us on today's Benidorm news update. We wish you great holidays if you are on ones these days. Enjoy anything that you can see. Explore beautiful places like these. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click a like and comment down below so that we could reach more audience and more people who might be interested in this gorgeous region of Costa Blanca, Benidorm in Spain. Wish you a lovely day and we'll see you in a new video here on the channel. Ideas.